Pablo, you were eight the last time the Twins uh, won a postseason game. Is there any way that the weight of that history uh, is on your mind at all or uh, any effect at all? Yeah. Well, I've heard, I've, I've heard about like the O and O and eighteen thing a lot, and I feel like just just like anything in life, nothing lasts forever, you know. And I feel like if there's a group that can, you know, like lean into this opportunity and embrace it, I feel like this group, like uh, sharing a clubhouse with these guys, I can tell this group is as good as any to go out there and then like give the team, the fans, the community, the opportunity to like celebrate something. Um, you know, I can say that majority of us have not been a part of that unfortunate streak, but I know our fans have. Our fans, the community, the state of Minnesota have been part of that. And I think we're we're embracing that and we're going to use it as the motivation and the fuel we want and need to like not only do it for ourselves, because ultimately the goal is to win, to win the championship, win the very last game of the season, but also like give the fans like something to like root for, celebrate. What level of work have you been able to put in the last 13 days or whatever and uh, how do you feel? I've uh, been able to do pretty much everything, you know, ground balls, um, hit, some live at bats, um, run, you know, every, every, I've been doing everything. I feel good. Yeah, I, I'm not going to put excuses of uh, how my season went uh, just because of, of the foot. Um, it's something that I dealt with since May when it happened and uh, it was tough to, to, to deal with. But I feel a lot better now. Um, I feel ready to go uh, in these playoffs, and uh, that's all that matters. You know, when you go into regular season, and the reason why they brought me here is first you want to win the division. We did that. So now you throw all the numbers out the window, and your season starts, and uh, this is the season that matters. So it's, it's time to go. Um, it's the same, really, just taking it day by day, trying to get better for, you know, we're trying to get through tomorrow. Um, at the moment right now, we're, we're going to get through the workout. I still got, you know, I hit in the cage. Um, but after that, we still got to do some stuff on the field, and we'll see where we're at. So how are you feeling physically? Is it still bothering you quite a bit? Not as much? Better than you thought? Yeah, unfortunately, like, it's been very maintained. It's been the same, like, progressively, like, a little bit better each day, but it's not, like, significant to where I got a big smile on my face. Like, I know secretly I'm going to be, like, locked in and balling out, but um, we'll see where we're at tomorrow. We're going to keep keep going day by day and you know tried as much as recovery as we can I mean I think we were here I was here all the way through the game the other day from 8 30 till 4 trying to do as much as we could so um, that's all you could do I, I would love to do anything at this point um, just based on feel I think the age would be great that'd be that'd be a big step so um, you know I'd love to be out there but I also don't want to be a hindrance to this team at all I mean this team's rolling um, I just want to be a part of it anyway if I'm a cheerleader that'd be great uh, if I'm hitting homers, that'd also be great, right? So um, whatever I could do and whatever Rocco and the team thinks best, I'll do that. Have you run at 100% or anything? I, I haven't got up to that yet. It's It's been kind of too tough, um, to be honest. But like I said, we're taking it day by day. So hopefully maybe tomorrow, you know, God willing, I'll, I'll be blessed enough to wake up feeling 110% and can ball out. How important and how different does this team feel with Royce Lewis in the lineup for you guys? Obviously, you know, he's he's been great all year long. Every time he's in the lineup, he's, he's a game changer. So, you know, he's been putting in the work. He's, he's been going out there. He looks really good. So, yeah, I'm very optimistic. How are you feeling about where the guys with some uncertainty were as they worked out today? Um, well, I think they've all made a lot of progress. I'm not going to actually discuss each and every one of them and just exactly where they sit and just uh, how likely they are to play um, this week and, and beyond this week. Um, one, I don't have every single one of those answers as we sit here right now. We have a pretty good idea, but uh, we don't have that completely figured out just because we still have more time to make uh, make decisions. So um, I know that's uh, a topic that uh, a, a lot of people probably are interested in, uh, who's playing. But um, we're going to set our lineup tomorrow when we when we have uh, when we hit that deadline, and we'll know the answers then. But but Carlos and Royce and and uh, and Byron have all been working out for the last week uh, and tracking and in a good direction. Each guy differently, um, and I think that uh, we'll have a much better sense for that after after tomorrow morning. Uh, Royce was out there. Byron was not. What do you kind of look for from Byron and 
work behind the scenes or as you guys kind of make a decision on that? Yeah, each guy's different. I mean, I think in, in Royce's case, obviously the hamstring, you know, very specific injury went on the IL for that. Um, he's been tracking running bases, you know, making sure that he's hitting. He took BP today. You guys all saw that out there. So I think for him, it's just all about, you know, make sure, making sure that's in a good place. I think in Carlos's case, obviously he dealt with the planter issue. Uh, that's tracked really well for him. And that's a positive, you know, positive. There's been some positive momentum on that. I think in the context of Byron, it's just very different, right? He's been down for an extended period of time. Uh, we got him in a, a rehab assignment, got him in some rehab games, and then have continued the live BPs since. Uh, but at this stage, you know, that, that decision is going to be made a little bit more broadly around kind of readiness, how it fits on our roster, what it looks like uh, ultimately for us uh, going into tomorrow. So we'll make, we'll make that call in the morning. Our young players that came in, they, they re-energized our group in, in so many ways. Um, uh, maybe even my, you know, woke me up in a lot of ways too. Uh, you know, the Eddie Julian factor, you know, they all fall under the umbrella. I think, you know, you could probably call it the Royce factor or the Walner. We could call it whatever you want. But um, these guys did a lot for our club. Uh, and then we also have like some serious veteran presence and, and experience on our club too. So uh, we got a little bit of everything. I don't think you can uh, label our group something and, and it encompasses everyone. Um, I like the, the, the it's, it's a well-rounded group that offers a lot of different things. So uh, our rookies have certainly put us here. I don't think we're sitting here without the, the performances by, by those guys. We knew the offensive profile was going to be there. This guy, he takes pitches. He knows the strike zone exceptionally well. He's got power. He hits, you know, he, in big spots, he finds a knack for getting the barrel of the ball. But I think really what I'm proud of with him is the defense. I think when he came in to us, you know, and, and was starting to play some second base at the lower levels, uh, he'd be the first to admit it was a little bit rougher. You know, he needed, to, he needed to refine his game at a faster pace than maybe what he was used to in college. He worked tirelessly with our minor league coaches, with the staff all the way through to continue to get better and better and better. And now he's played both second and first up here really well uh, throughout the course of the season. And he's continuing to get better there. So we know the offensive profile. He's got power. Uh, he's, he can really work a walk. He knows the strike zone exceptionally well. Uh, and he's, he's fun-loving. He just loves the game. He loves playing the game. And I, I'm really proud of the work that he's put in and the work that, that led to him coming here. That your guys, the, maybe the younger guys are leaning on as far as postseason experience. I know there's other guys that have been there. Yeah, you know, Correa's got a ton. Um, you know, Vasquez's got two rings. Michael A's got a ring. You know, there's a, there's a lot of guys that have played in some really meaningful games. But you know, I think with this group, we're, there's not a lot of us play very tight. You know, I, I think we're pretty loose, loosey goosey. We play, we have fun, we we play aggressive. Um, so I don't envision us getting too tight and too nervous about these games it's it's going to be a big environment um it's going to be really cool to see target field packed out and how it's going to be but i think if we can just you know do have fun and, and do what we do and, and find some success early in the game i think we can kind of take a breath of fresh air and just go play our games yeah guys have asked me um you know what are the, what are the playoffs like and you know i tried to say the same thing that you Samaro told me you know i guess it's five or six years ago now um try to turn out turn off the outside noise and uh continue playing the game the same way there's uh you know you're, like i said your family your friends everybody's going to be texting and oh, i can't wait to watch the game uh but staying true to to how we've gotten here and and understanding that it's still about executing pitches and, and having good at bats and, and making routine plays so if we do that uh, you know that gives us the best chance for success pablo what does it mean to you to be the game one starter it means a lot uh, these are the games that as a kid, you dream of. I'm one of the players that in past seasons where I would not be playing in the playoffs, I'm always watching the playoff games. Every game that would be on TV, I would be watching them. And I would, I would always picture myself wanting to be on that situation, uh, that scenario. So having the opportunity to perform in a playoff situation and doing it for the Twins, it, it means the world to me. And I'm really, really looking forward to it and um, just re extremely grateful and excited. We, when we traded for him, we had heard good things about the makeup. We had heard some thing about, things about the work ethic and how he prepares and what that looks like. He's exceeded those expectations and then some. And I think that his preparation and his, uh, just for those who've been around him, many of you have for most of the season, it's, it's unique uh, in the way he approaches this. He's ready for this game. He's ready for this, this nod. This will, this will be, there'll be a lot of adrenaline running for him tomorrow, but um, really proud of what he's accomplished this year and, and ultimately what uh, we'll have for him, with him for a lot of years to come.
what you don't see behind the scenes is the work in the in the weight room, the you know in, intention to detail on his off day, all the things that he does uh, behind the scenes to prepare with the advanced team and how he's prepping in his bullpens. I mean, he doesn't take anything for granted. I've fortunate in my career been around some really good starting pitchers. I would put his planning and process and the way he goes about his work up there with any of them. I mean, all that said, we're going to ride Pablo and, and Sonny. They, they, w- those guys have pitched us to this point, so we're going to let them go out there and do their jobs too. But besides some some uh, what I would just call some pitching decisions that, that may look a little different than what we've typically done, I think we're going to operate very similarly. About two weeks ago when we were trying to outline some of the guys coming back, you know, notably Chris Paddock, who hadn't pitched all year, Brock Stewart, who coming off an injury, uh, Louis Varlin transitioning to the bullpen, in addition to a bunch of guys who were already on the team, our focus and hope was to get them in major league games, get stress tested, you know, see how they feel, see how they come out of it, see how they rebound with a bullpen you know, a day or two after having thrown in the game. Uh, I couldn't be happier with the way those guys navigated that situation you know every every day uh, I thought Chris did a really nice job with bouncing back you know certainly hadn't pitched all year Louie transitioning to the bullpen we knew that was going to be a little bit um, new for him because he hadn't had to do that yet professionally and I think in Brock's case he had really been throwing the ball well for the last couple of weeks even prior to his activation but we were taking it slow to make sure he was in a good place I think it all lined up in a way where we were able to use those guys get them some activity and have a much better sense for how they could perform you know, should we put them on the mound the next couple of days Paddock now in there with Brock Stewart, with Kenta maybe yeah. helping out. How does that sort of change the look? I mean, it definitely changes it. You know, it hasn't. we haven't had it for too long. It's hard to say how exactly it's going to change it. You know, um, you know, at the end of the day, we've got a lot of really talented arms. And so it's up to Rocco and the staff to, to decide who gets to throw when. And, you know, they're going to do their best to put us in spots where it, it helps us, you know, be the most successful. So... You know, the good thing is we all believe in each other. We're all excited for each other's opportunities, and, and we're looking forward to seeing how guys uh, embrace the moment. And we're definitely talented enough to, to handle it, and uh, it's going to be a good, a good fight uh, regardless of who's throwing when and, and what happens. So it should be a lot of fun. Derek, have you settled down 11 pitchers or 12 pitchers? Yeah, so it's been a conversation internally. Obviously, you look at what teams have done in prior years. And, you know, there aren't a lot of three-game series you know, history in baseball. And this has been a new format the last couple of years. Uh, and trying to understand what it could look like. Um, we have a decent sense for what that is. Could somewhat depend on some of the position player conversations that we're having. So uh, we're not ready to say that just yet. And, uh, and we'll land on that tomorrow. What do you think the playoffs will still be able to bring out of you guys in terms of maybe bringing out the best that this team is capable of? I think we're going to be more focused for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's really, it's a really important uh, games coming up. And, you know, I just think we are going to be more focused, uh, you know, just doing the little things right, uh, get, doing the job done, just getting the job done. And, and I just think the team that we have, it just it been a winning team the whole year. So uh, I don't think if we, if we, keep playing the way that we, that we are uh, we're going to be in a great spot um, you know we're going to keep winning the games the, the upcoming games and and that's all we got to do he shows up to camp and he has been a, a revelation for us to be honest and um We've asked him to do virtually everything you could ask a player to do and he's done everything at a very high level um he's been one of our MVPs this year is what he's been. So, you know, you, you put him in the infield, you put him in the outfield. He's been an exceptional base runner. He stole 30 some odd bases. And the at bats have been awesome from both sides of the plate. So, um, he's been, uh, you know, I expected a lot from him, but we've gotten so much more than we ever could have, uh, could have hoped for. And, um, I mean, I think I'm lucky he wanted to come play here because he had a choice as far as what he was going to do. So it's worked out really good, I think, for everybody. Hey, Carlos. Bob Nightingale, USA Today. When you were with the Astros and you guys dominated the postseason team every year, was there one game or what moment that got you guys going, that gave you confidence to keep winning that you like to bring over here? Yeah, I think uh, I've said a lot of times that this team reminds me a lot of the 15 Astros. Um, just because you got some veteran guys in there already that have had success in the past, and then you bring the young guys, and they have success right away. Um, you talk about Royce, you talk about Warner, you talk about Julian, right? Um, and even the bullpen arms that we have, we have some young guys out there throwing 100. So um, it reminds me a lot of that team, and I feel like that, that win in the wild card that year, uh, it made that team believe that, that, that you know, we could beat anyone, and I feel like with the guys that we have right now and the way the roster is constructed, I think a, a good win right away out the gate will give everybody a confidence to know that, that we're a great team and that we can compete against anyone.